Stay tuned for an important message from Know Before about how cyber criminals are using COVID-19. Hi, this is Perry Carpenter. I'm Know Before's Chief Evangelist and Strategy Officer. And it's really incredible what we've seen over the past month or so in the world of fishing. You know, we're, we're all around the world struggling to deal with this tragic pandemic of COVID-19. And while we're working on wrestling with that, and while we're dealing with all of the um, fear and pain and uncertainty and confusion caused by this tragedy, the cyber criminals have kicked into overdrive. And they're using all of their normal tricks and a few new ones to try to get our users to click on phishing emails or open sketchy attachments or download uh, malware to their machines so that they can exfiltrate information or infect our network. And so they're at their game and they are having a heyday with it. In fact, Barracuda Networks found that over the course of March, phishing increased 667%. And we've identified three different waves of attacks that the cyber criminals have tried to use. So we've identified three waves, starting from brand impersonation, uh, exploiting trust, to some experimentation, to refinement on that experimentation. Let's take just a few minutes and walk through those trends, and we'll see how the cyber criminals are using this to accomplish their goals. So let's look at the blog and see what all came in over the month of March when it comes to COVID phishing. I'm just gonna look at the highlights so that you can get an idea of what's going on. So first of all, uh, we talked about wave one being this brand spoofing essentially. So it's, it's use of known brands in order to leverage trust and get people to click on things. So, uh, of course, we see the fake uh, CDC uh, things. And, and the ultimate goal for the attacker here was to put malware on somebody's system. So you see uh, this, this CDC message uh, wanting to get somebody to click on a link and download malware. And then we get into uh, exploiting uh, this in a whole number of ways because everybody's jumping on this, not just the, the criminals, but people that are trying to monetize it in other ways as well. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, this is an extremely detailed blog post that goes into the different ways that uh, people are scamming and then exploiting uh, unsuspecting people. Um, then we get into uh, a number of, of other things that talk about the wave, where it's really just uh, going through some of the uh, ways that phishing has worked in the past and that it's being repurposed within a COVID type of, of theme. So good information here that you'll want to share with your people uh, about some of these different flavors that are out there. And you should definitely be aware of these as you try to protect your organization. Now, what we did on the 23rd is we, we went into those three waves that we had talked about and our principal uh, researcher that looks at all the different fish alert button submissions and tracks a ton of different types of fish out there really gave a detailed overview of what he was seeing and how that's looking. Then on the 25th, we really wanted to make people aware of some of the different ways that this is being exploited, not just in the sense of phishing, but in other areas. And so the FCC released audio samples of coronavirus phone scams. Uh, now, if you go and you click on this and look at the FCC site, what you'll see is that there are uh, these audio samples on the side and you'll get a sense of the types of pretexts that are being used really interesting to see the craftiness behind the attackers here. Now, you knew that this was coming. Uh, on the 25th, the FBI warned of stimulus check scams because one of the main things that always comes up when it comes to phishing is the lure of money. And everybody is hurting 
around the world right now. And in the US, we just passed this stimulus bill. And out of that comes uh, for certain income levels, uh, the promise of a stimulus check. And there's a lot of questions around when those are going out and who's going to get them and, and so on. And so uh, the attackers, of course, are going to start to use that as a potential lure to get people to click on things. So the FBI warned about that. Um, definitely something to warn your people about uh, and train them on. Now on this one that we talked about on the, the 26th, um, if you were to flash back to last year and the year before, there were a lot of discussions on a phishing technique called sextortion, where the bad guys would uh, pull a data dump um, of passwords that had been uh, compromised due to a breach in the past, uh, and then they would grab one of those passwords, send it out to the email address that was attached to it and say, uh, we've got your password, so therefore, you know, that person knows that there's some legitimacy to the person that's sending it. And we know that you've been participating in these types of websites. And if you don't give us $2,000, uh, we're going to send the videos that we've taken from your webcam uh, off to everybody in your contact list. Well, now that's been uh, taken and refreshed and they're showing the password and they're giving some threats and even saying that, hey, uh, if you don't pay us, we will infect you with coronavirus. So interesting thing, again, using the fear of the current news around us in order to take advantage of us. Now, on the same side of that, uh, this fear of infection, there's another fish that's going around of, uh, we believe that you have been in contact with somebody who is infected. And so again, this is, this is panic. This is that psychological lever that the attacker is pulling that's saying, oh, I need to see what's going on. This is somebody that I've been in contact with. And of course they've got a, an attachment here that they want you to download and uh, they want to trick you into enabling macros so that they can execute code on your system. Uh, and then on the 31st, I published a blog post on the importance of doing phishing simulations during this time because there there has been talk about uh, should you be doing phishing simulations during this are people too stressed out to be able to deal with it and uh, i i really believe that now is the time to be doing it because your people are wide open out there they're working from home they're distracted they're stressed out it is a heyday for cyber criminals and so they're going to be sending, and we know that they are sending, uh, more fish than ever. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, Barracuda Networks noted that there was a 667% rise in fish just in the month of March. And so with that amount of concentration that the cyber criminals are putting on phishing, if we were to neglect doing this type of training, we're leaving a really big gap in our security defenses. And so um, one of the other things that is really interesting that, that I posted in that blog is just the sheer number of new uh, templates that the cyber criminals are using. So you see the evolution of how they're approaching this because uh, early in January, there were just basically one variant, uh, February, two through February 8, uh, there were five different variants and you start to see that grow over time where in this last week of March, the 22nd through the 28th, uh, that grew from 36 variants of phishing templates that we were seeing the cyber criminals use to over 94 templates. So really, really big spike because they know it works. The psychological levers are there. The people are distracted they're stressed out and they are wide open unless we're doing something to protect them, to train them. And then uh, again, because they are wide open, uh, one of the things that is, that is causing this um, flare in susceptibility to fish is the fact that we're doing social distancing. And as humans, we don't do that well. We're social creatures by nature. Um, and 
also people are working from home and so there's there's this idea of blending uh, personal environments and work environments and we have lowered defenses because we think about our home environment differently uh, we tend to overshare because now we're mixing social media and we're taking pictures in our house showing our work environment the the new uh, office that we set up and so on uh, and then we're lonely we're just reaching out for connection and so we're again we're we're wide open in so many ways and so now more than ever, it's time to really pay attention. Look at every email with a sense of skepticism. And if you have questions, ask somebody. Uh, if you're an end user, ask your IT department to verify the legitimacy of an email before you click on anything. Uh, if you're a head of IT, ask a trusted security vendor about something new or novel that you're seeing that you're concerned about because at the end of the day we're all in this together thank you remember keep calm and don't click we're all in this together